Welcome back to our United for Math series on fourth grade division. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the distributive property. At this point, your student should have a great understanding of the distributive property from third grade lessons and even when we did multi-digit multiplication. So in distributive property, we're breaking up one of the numbers and distributing out another. So in this case, we're going to be taking our dividend and breaking it down or decomposing it into its parts and then dividing it by our divisor. So let's take a look at a problem and see how this really works. So in this problem, we have 276 divided by 3. My first step is to look at the first number and see what multiple comes closest to it. So if there's not a multiple of 3 that comes closest to 2, I'm going to look at 27. This is a lot like long division. We look at the first part of the number and try to divide into it but it takes a little switch right here. So the closest multiple to 27 is 27. So I'm gonna put 27 here, but since I'm in the hundreds place, I need to put a placeholder zero right here. So now I have 270. If I subtract 270 I'm from 276, I get six. Now I have to take three and find out the closest multiple to six. So three, six, ooh, it's six. So let's subtract six, and now I have zero. Now I'm gonna take these two numbers and create two separate division equations. 270 divided by three, and I'm gonna add that to six divided by three. So I've started out finding multiples close to the numbers in my dividend, and now I've created two separate equations that students can easily solve using their basic division skills. So 270 divided by 3, if I look at my basic fact, 27 divided by 3 is 9 and add that 0. Now I'm going to add 6 divided by 3, which is 2, which gives me 92. So my quotient is 92. And I can check that by multiplying 92 times 3 and I'll get 276. Now that was a problem where we were easily able to see the multiples of 3 that went into the number, 27 and 6. Now let's look at a problem where it might not be as easy and we might have a remainder. In this problem, we have 6,421 divided by 5. Knowing my rules of divisibility, I know this is not going to come out even and I'm going to have a remainder. So, but first I'm going to look at the numbers just like before. What's the closest multiple of 5? To the number 6. Well in this case it would be 5. So I put 5 here and because this is the thousands place I'm going to put zeros to fill in the, the place values. So once I subtract 5,000 I'm going to get 1,421. Now I have to find the closest multiple again. In this case we have a 1 here and 5 is larger than 1 so we're going to have to look at 14. The closest multiple to 14 would be 10. So we're going to put a 10 here and then fill in the gaps with zeros as placeholders. We're going to subtract again and this will give us 421. Let's look for another close multiple. Since we have 4, we're going to have to look at 42. The closest multiple of 5 to 42 would be 40. Add one zero as a placeholder. Now we have 21 left over. The closest multiple of 5 to 21 is going to be 20. So I'm going to subtract 20 here and have a remainder of 1. This is instantly our remainder. So now we're going to put that up top here so I don't forget that there's a remainder of 1. Now we create those equations. 5,000 divided by 5. I'm going to add that to 1,000 divided by 5. 400 divided by 5, and then 20 divided by 5. We're going to add those all together at the end. So 5,000 divided by 5 is 1,000. 1,000 divided by 5 is 200. 400, or 400 divided by 5. Remember, look at the basic facts. 40 divided by 5 is 8, and add one zero and 20 divided by 5 is 4. Now add all these together, 1,284. 
Now we have that as our quotient. So we ended up with that quotient of 1,284. And don't forget that remainder at the top. We had that remainder of one in that problem. We always have to remember to include that in our answer. So this process takes a little while. With larger numbers, like in the 6,000s, we had four different equations at the end. But those equations are gonna be much easier for some students to handle. They're broken down into numbers that are multiples of our div a divisor. So that helps them answer more quickly using their basic division facts. In our next lesson, we're going to be talking about the box method. This is a crazy way to do long division and an easier way for most students. So thank you for joining us today at United for Math. We'll see you in our next lesson.